Hi, hello everyone. This is Shanmugaraj. Welcome to my channel. One of the aims of this channel is to build a global knowledge sharing platform in the domains of leadership, agile and project management. You can join me and help me with that either by subscribing to this channel or sharing my videos to our friends. All right. So having said that, let us get into today's topic. Currently, we are discussing some of the leadership ideas from MID Sloan School of Management. Today's topic is MIT Sloan Reading List, 8 books from 2023. This particular article has been published in MIT in the month of November 2023. White Matters from artificial intelligence to supply chains to the future of China's economy. These books help explain what's happening in today's business environment. The books on this year's list are of must reads for leaders and managers, which are impressive in their own right. Here are the eight books from MID Sloan community that offers insights and explanations on topics ranging from data monetization to workforce ecosystems. The first book in the list is Power and Progress, Our Thousand Year Struggle Over Technology and Prosperity, written by MIT economist Darren and Simon Johnson. In 18th century Britain, Technical improvements in textile production generate a great wealth for factory owners, but created horrible working and living conditions for textile workers, who did not see their incomes rise for almost 100 years. Today, artificial intelligence and other digital technologies mesmerize the business alight while threatening to undermine jobs and democracy through excessive automation and massive data collection and intrusive surveillance. In their book, Asimoglu and Johnson decry the economic and social damage caused by the concentrated power of business and show how the tremendous computing advances of the past half century can become empowering and democratizing tools. The second book is The Rise and Fall of the East, How Exams, Autocracy, Stability and Technology Brought China's Success and Why They Might Lead to Its Decline. This is from MIT Sloan Professor Yasheng Huang. China's economy is stagnating Plogged by real estate crisis, high unemployment, dwindling confidence among investors, and other setbacks. Some people might be surprised at the severity of these challenges. But in writing his book, Huang anticipated that China's economy would falter. According to Huang, the world is seeing a repeat of a period in Chinese history, during which restrictions on economic and political freedom created economic stagnation. Huang's bottom line, without academic collaboration, without business collaboration, without technological collaborations, the pace of Chinese technological progress is going to slow down dramatically. The third book in the the reading list is Workforce Ecosystems Reaching Strategic Goals with People, Partners and Technologies. This is from MIT Initiative on the Digital Economy Digital Fellow, Elizabeth J. Altman, MIT Sloan Management Review Editorial Director, David Kiron, Jeff and Robin Jones. Workforce ecosystems need managers to ensure that everyone is functioning well together, 
but the key to the successful ecosystem is not management it is orchestration management often implies a directly efforts to control orchestration on the other hand conveys the idea that individual actors have agency or autonomy beyond the strictures imposed by hr and management fiat in their book altman kiron and their co-authors outline the essential parts of an orchestration framework including leadership approaches integration architectures and technology enablers the fourth one is the magic conveyor belt supply chains ai and the future of work this is written by yoshi shafi amadi engineering professor and director of amadi center for transportation and logistics consumers really consumers rarely thought about supply chains before the pandemic goods seem to appear seamlessly in stores and on the doorsteps but pandemic era disruptions lifted the curtain on this apparent magic revealing the underlying structure unavoidable complexity and massive scale of modern supply chains in his book sefi takes a close look at how supply chains operate and how new technologies might change them one of his examples examines how bananas the most frequently purchased grocery items in the us make their way from costa rica to boston where they appear on grocery store shelves as if from supply chain santa claus and his elves first one is wiring the winning organization liberating our collective greatness through solidification simplification and amplification this is written by jin kim and mid sloan senior lecturer steven spear organizations succeed when they design their processes routines and procedures to encourage employees to problem solve and contribute to a common purpose in their book spear and kim suggest three mechanisms leaders can engage to hone employees problem solving skills solidification makes it easier to solve problems by pulling problem solving out of the fast paced and often unforgiving realm of performance simplification makes the problems themselves easier to solve by reshaping them large problems are deliberately broken down into smaller and simpler ones and amplification makes it obvious that there are problems and makes it clear whether those problems have seen and solved sixth one is the case for good jobs how great companies bring dignity pay and meaning to everyone's work this is from mid sloan professor of the practice zenip tone almost a decade ago tone published the good stop good job strategy which drew from 15 years of research on companies that offered good jobs while creating value for all of their stakeholders in our most recent book 10 offers four operational choices managers can make to maintain a well paid well trained workforce they include focus and simplify maintain clarity about what value the business offers customers and simplify flow and work to ensure that frontline workers can serve the customer well standardize and empower standardize routine processes to increase efficiency and consistency and empower employees to engage in improvements that increase customer satisfaction the seventh one hardwood square a love story amadi sloan associate professor katherine turco as a young girl then a university student later a community community advocate turco spent many hours in hardwood square as an 
economic sociologist. Turco uses the iconic Cambridge, Massachusetts neighborhood as a backdrop to explore how state level markets are a centrally important social institution in American life. In her book, Turco traces the history of the square, which began as a 17th century open air market and weaves in the story of her own strong attachments to Harvard Square institutions like the Brattle Theatre, Grendel's Den, and Club Passium. The eighth and the final one in our list is Data is Everybody's Business. The Fundamentals of Data Monetization. So it, this is written by Barbara Hess Wigzom, Cynthia M. Beth, and Leslie Owens. Right? Almost every organization recognizes the importance of data analytics by now. The next step is data monetization, turning the data assets into money. In their book, the authors draw from case studies field observations and a data research advisory board to look at how organizations can use data not just to create benefits like higher, uh, higher customer satisfaction but also to purposefully realize financial value money to improve their bottom line with this we come to the conclusion of this video hope you guys got a glimpse of MIT reading list, we talked about eight books from MIT professors. You can tell me which one you already read or which one you like to read. I think some of the some of the books I covered in my previous videos as well, you can go and refer it. I hope you guys like this kind of videos that helps you to become a better leader. Right. With that, I'm signing off. See you next video.